Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about Smart Sunday, the second in the series of Smart Sunday after it stopped clapping my hands. That's my <laughs> new thing is not to, to clap my hands. So anyway, uh, the sound should be good here. I have double checked the microphone because I've done that a couple of times now with the live feeds is I forgot to plug in the microphone when I got started here. So Isobelisk, I think I'm saying that right, is going to the National Guard. Congratulations on that, and that's very exciting. He got his license on the 3rd of August, so congratulations on getting your license and passing that. Congratulations to all of the other smart drivers uh, who have got their license in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Sam is here <laughs> from Rookie, Driving, Rookie Auto Driving School in Bronx, New York City, and the new piece of information that I learned in the last week is that in New York City, and I want to ask Sam this question, uh, you can't turn right on a red light in New York City. Now, Sam, does that apply to Manhattan proper, or does that apply to Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and the outlying suburbs as well? So maybe you can just figure that out. And Big Money Boss is here from Las Vegas. How is Las Vegas? Is it hot there in the summertime, Big Money Boss? Are you sweating like crazy in the desert? I know that they say it's a dry heat, but I mean, you know, when I stick my head in my oven, it's a dry heat too, but. <laughs> uh, King Julian, Trinidad and Tobago, that's exciting. Uh, King Julian, are you going for a license down there in Trinidad and Tobago? Uh, just leave that information for me. As well, uh, I, don't know what happened with the YouTube channel this week. The YouTube channel, great news, don't get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong in terms of what's going on here. The channel exploded this week. I mean, exploded. Uh, we had 260,000 minutes of watch time two days ago on Friday. So incredible just absolutely over the top incredible in terms of the success of big money boss now i'm i'm hoping it's not a bubble that <laughs> it's for short money short short time i'm hoping that it keeps going so okay questions somebody asked somebody said they got their test bryce got his his test i got my license last friday Excellent. Thank you so much. And God bless you as well for that. Congratulations on getting your license. And uh, yes, I'm happy to hear that you're still watching the videos, Bryce, because there is a lot of information here about learning how to drive. I do, you know, jokingly say to people that I teach people how to pass a road test, but I'd like to think that there's some information that I'm imparting as well that's helping people to learn how to drive and to drive safely. 12's Nation, how do you deal with angry drivers? Unfortunately, angry drivers are going to be part and parcel of learning how to drive. So you need to sort of take a deep breath when you've got angry drivers because it's going to happen. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to impede other people and they think uh, that you know that they need to be in front of you. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know that it's going to happen because if you are prepared for it saying to yourself people are going to be angry then when it does happen it's not going to be a big surprise you're going to say okay this was coming now it's happened uh if you if angry drivers i'll tell you a story about angry drivers three years ago i went through a divorce with my kids and it was an incredibly stressful time in my life I'm driving back from work. I'm working out of town. I'm about an hour and 20 minutes north of town. And I am not doing the speed limit, to say the least, in coming back to get to get my kids. And I go into a parking lot. It's a busy parking lot at the a and And I have to go around in a circle to come back to get my kids because it's raining and they're standing over on the sidewalk underneath the, the canopy under the drugstore. And there's a van across the parking lot blocking my path around the parking lot to come back to my kids. So I start honking the horn for this person to move out of the way. The guy gets out of his van, walks across the parking lot, opens the door of my car, and I had my left hand on the steering wheel. He put his hand on my wrist and I looked at him and calmly said to him, you need to take your hand off my wrist. He took his hand off my wrist, slammed the driver's door, and 
said some very, not very nice things to me and went back and got back in his van and moved his van. I would recommend that if you are in that situation of road rage, lock your doors, do not make eye contact with them, do not talk to them. Simply call the police and have the police come and deal with the situation if it gets out of hand. Because unfortunately there have been incidences of road rage where people get incredibly angry to the point that they cannot control their emotions. And there are some places in the world, a lot of places in the world actually, that unfortunately they're going to have weapons. They're going to have a tire iron, they're going to have a gun, perhaps they're going to have a club or some other thing. So uh, do not engage at all. Do not open your doors, don't look at them, don't talk to them, simply ignore them. And if you have a cell phone with you in the car, contact the police. That's how you deal with angry people. Okay? So anytime is still got your license but learning uh king julian you'll be taking my test pretty soon excellent before years end well and we're really happy to hear that that has helped out um sweet 15 i have a week's worth of lessons this week here i'll just uh put the chat up here for you and then everybody else can see it as well there we go and then they know what I'm looking at. <laughs> yes, anytime. Do not engage. But yes, no eye contact, no nothing. Steve, absolutely. In terms of if you have a road rage situation, do not engage with the person. Because if you engage with the person, that's simply going to increase their emotion, their anger, and they're going to become more angry. And <laughs> here's the other key piece of information about people that are angry. Do not tell people who are angry to calm down. Uh, a a person who is upset and you tell them to calm down, they rarely ever calm down. And the other thing you need to know about angry people is, is that angry people can only stay angry for about two minutes. If you do not engage with them and you do not interact for, with them, uh, they can only do it for about two minutes. So if you're not, in, if they're standing outside your car uh, uh, on the door and yelling and screaming, they're only going to be able to do that for about two minutes before they run out of steam and they're going to go off somewhere else. So just one more quick story. When I lived in Australia, I worked in a butcher shop on Saturday mornings and there was a big husky guy there, you know, broad shoulders, short squat. He probably weighed about 220 pounds, uh, you know, the barrel chest and whatnot. And he came in one Saturday morning and he had a black eye. And uh, <laughs> I guess somebody cut him off in traffic and it was a 55-year-old bricklayer with, you know, calloused hands and, you know, blue denim shirt on. And he got out of the car and went right up and the guy the bricklayer got out of the car he didn't even hesitate he just punched the guy right in the face and unfortunately when he told me that story uh you know this 220 pound guy that probably nobody would ever mess with i just uh <laughs> realized how quickly it could happen when when there's a road rage so do not engage in terms of road rage uh <laughs> Yeah, Steve, the internet, yes. Unfortunately, uh, there are angry troll people as well on the internet, and I get some of them on my channel. And, uh, you know, you just don't engage. Uh, that's the best, you know, one of the best things that I've learned in the last little while is not to engage with people who are angry. Because sometimes you just don't have to engage. So uh, that's a good strategy. Uh, Burren. I'm extremely nervous. Teach me how to get rid of that. Well, unfortunately, Burren, you're not going to get rid of that very much and I'll another story here when when I was doing martial arts when I first started doing martial arts my sensei uh, insisted that we go to tournament well I hated going to tournament because first of all I have this immense competitive streak in me and I never won at tournament so I didn't like going to tournament as well when I first started going to tournament I was strung like a harp string I was tense, I was anxious, and, and because I was one of the lower belts and I just started martial arts, you went at the end of the day. So you would get there at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning and then you wouldn't do your kata, you wouldn't do your presentation until 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, by that time, you're just over the top in terms of anxious and fearful. But my sensei kept encouraging me to continue to go to these things and continue to train. And it's the same thing with what you're doing in terms of 
a license and feeling anxious and feeling nervous in terms of driving. You have to get in the vehicle and you have to practice because when you get nervous and you get anxious, you're going to do what you have practiced. So practice driving and the more that you practice, the more comfortable you become with driving, the the, the tension and the fear is not going to go away, but it's going to be there. And when we get anxious or we get tense, we do what we practice. And that's what my sensei used to say to us all the time. We do what we practice, especially when we get tense. So the more you practice, the more driving you do, uh, the better you're going to be when you get fearful or you get under pressure and those types of things. Hey, Miguel, uh, anytime. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, and Themus, yeah, doing my theory test for my learner's permit this Friday. Excellent. Air brakes theory as well. I'm in Montreal. Is there a written part for the air brakes theory test? Uh, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. Yes, I believe Anthemus there is in uh, Quebec as well. And there are some practice driving test questions for air brakes for the theory part on the Smart Drive Test website. So head over there and have a look at that. Uh, did, did, well, who, who else has a question? <laughs> Steve is a big rig. Yes, bigger vehicles tend to uh, <laughs> win. Uh, big Money Boss had an, an anger thing. Uh, yes, you do get angry and you somehow have to control that anger when you're driving. So uh, just try to breathe and say to yourself, really, is this worth it? <laughs> Rami, Surrey, BC. Uh, passed my road test last week. Thank you so much. Yes, I saw that. That was awesome. I'm really happy to hear that you did pass your road test down there in Surrey. King Julian. Yes, people will break windshields, but at least if they're breaking the windshield that you're going to be fairly safe uh, because it's not likely that they're actually going to get through the windshield to be able to get a hold of you. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else we got here? Nijin. Self-driving cars. That's an excellent point. Self-driving cars. I wanted to talk about self-driving cars because I've had a couple of comments come through on the shifting theory video about the fact that self-driving cars are going to come forward and that truck drivers, bus drivers, taxi drivers, anybody who drives for a living transporting freight or passengers or services is going to be out of a job because of self-driving cars. Now, some of you may or may not know Sorry, I had something fall over on the floor there. Uh, some of you may or may not know that my dissertation, my grad, my university work looked at the transition between motor traffic and horse-drawn traffic. And there was a huge um, transition, a social protest against that because you have to understand that there was a huge infrastructure in place with the horses. And the transition from horse-drawn vehicles to motor traffic was not an easy transition and it, and it took place over the course of a hundred years. Now, coming back to self-driving vehicles, just bear with me for a minute. The infrastructure for self-driving vehicles uh, is enormous. Uh, you need computers, uh, satellites, GPS tracking, all kinds of things in place. Uh, we are not going to have autonomous vehicles in place in the next 50 or 100 years. Uh, Self-driving autonomous vehicles are a long, long way off. And it was interesting because in preparation, I'm actually gonna do a video on autonomous vehicles and self-driving vehicles because let me tell you, don't get me wrong. I'm the first one for autonomous vehicles. <laughs> I want autonomous vehicles. There is nothing more that I want than to get in a vehicle and tell it where to go and let me, let it take me there. But they're a long, long way off, 50 years, 100 years. And I was looking at the crash that killed Joshua Brown in Florida with the Tesla last year on the 7th of May in 2016. And it was interesting that they blamed the driver. They said that there were no less than eight warnings for the driver to put his hands back on the steering wheel. So unfortunately, they've passed the responsibility off to the driver in terms of the crash that, that Tesla had in May 2016, which is a little bit I'm still trying to get my head around it in terms of the psychology of it because if I'm in an autonomous vehicle I want the, the autonomous vehicle to drive I don't want to have to put my hands on the steering wheel and pay attention so we're getting there okay yes 
self-driving vehicles in the winter time i mean and the other question is is that if you're talking about tractor trailers and you're talking about buses and those types of things i mean let's just talk about tractor trailers for a minute because i was having a discussion with a mate of mine this afternoon uh how is how are you going to get a, a tractor trailer into a loading dock and backed into a loading dock i just i don't know because it's so it's such a specific and exact maneuver that i just don't know how an, an autonomous vehicle is going to do that big money boss how is the video coming on curves and highways yes it's on my list this week i'm going to do the garage the backing into a garage video for you i'm going to get that one done for you i'm going to do the autonomous video the autonomous car video and i'm going to do the highway video so i'm going to get those done those are on my list they're on the priority they're at the top of the list i got a few other things i got to do this week unfortunately i got to go down and deal with my tenants in victoria yet again so we're we're working on that <clears throat> okay this is an excellent point that sam made uh i mentioned at the introduction that sam is with rookie auto driving school in bronx new york city they will not make you park between two vehicles there in new york so just know that and most jurisdictions are not going to make you park be between two vehicles most of the time they're going to take you into parking lot and you're going to park off posts or you're going to park behind one vehicle okay oscar uh look at the video on Controlling speed. I'll put it down in the description box for you after on terms of how to control the gas pedal, the throttle, and that will help you with that. So we'll do that. Uh, William, how far uh, objects are in the mirror? Uh, when you're looking in the mirror and the vehicle is behind you, you should be able to see the entire front of the vehicle in the lower half of the mirror. That will give you a good indication of how far away uh, and then the other thing is, is to make sure that before you change lanes or whatnot, that you shoulder check to move over to make sure that you have an adequate gap behind you. Okay. Uh, Tony, do you have to parallel park perfectly? No, you don't have to parallel park perfectly. They do want you sort of 8 to 12 inches from the curb, ideally. However, if you nudge the curb, like just bump the curb and then realize, oh my God, I'm at, I'm at the curb and you pull forward, that's not a big deal. You can pull forward and adjust and then back into the space. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you will get um, some demerits for that, but it's not going to be terminal in terms of failing your road test. If you do hit the curb and the body rocks over the chassis of the vehicle, then that's an automatic fail. Or you push the wheel up over the sidewalk, then unfortunately that's a fail. But know that your road test does not have to be perfect. You don't have to do a perfect score from first to end. You are allowed a certain amount of demerits on your test, and you'll still be successful on passing your road test. So know that uh, for the purposes of your road test that it doesn't have to be. Um... So know that. Okay. Big money boss. When is your next how-to video is coming out? Hopefully tomorrow. I just I got backed up with holidays so it just had to take a little bit of a break but <laughs> definitely tomorrow for sure uh we'll get one up and get that going for you uh i think i can get the parking into the car for you fairly simple so anthemos uh ups driver for 16 years i've never driven a tractor trailer should i take 10 hours or 20 hours practical course oh anthemos uh in terms of driving tractor trailer um oh Anthemus, where are you and our 10 or 20 hour practical course for, okay, so you've been a UPS driver. Are you driving one of those UPS vans that are kind of like the, the large cargo vans? Just leave me a note there and I'll, yeah. As Steve says here, more hours is better. The more seat time you can get, the better. Because you have to realize that when you take a tractor trailer course, there's five components for the tractor trailer course, right? There's turning, shifting, pre-trip inspection, hook and unhook, and then there's backing up. Those are your five basic components of your tractor trailer course. The shifting is going to eclipse everything. You're, for the first few days, you're just gonna be stuck in on that gearbox. But turning, getting the vehicle around an urban area and turning corners is going to be uh, your biggest challenge in terms of learning how to drive a tractor trailer. Uh, because there's a lot of off tracking in a tractor trailer and how you navigate around a corner is going to be your biggest challenge and as I say to students when I'm teaching them how to drive tractor trailer the the tractor the truck can go anywhere 
in the road but the trailer has to stay in its lane and that's your goal in terms of uh, preparing for a road test and that takes a bit of um, that takes a bit of time in order to be able to do that so know that the turning is going to be your most important feature of your tractor trailer course however shifting a non-synchromesh transmission is going to be the bigger thing and if you haven't seen the uh, shifting theory video here on the channel have a look at that already okay uh, when driving a mo motorcycle I can s I can lane split Sandra where are you Sandra that you're saying you can lane split because I know that they do that in uh, California and they do it in other places I know they do it in Australia uh, whatnot so yeah just let me know where you are okay who else we got here Brent when should I start turning my car when pulling out of a parking spot so I don't swipe side swipe the vehicle uh, okay Brent uh, Brett sorry uh, you need to be you need to be in front of the vehicle so where you are sitting in the driver's seat you need to be able to see the front of the vehicle before you start turning the steering wheel is what you need to do and that's when you start turning the steering wheel okay uh, sweet 15 are you able to adjust your mirrors when you're parking on a road test it is not recommended okay if you have a newer vehicle uh, I rented a 2017 Nissan Murano there a few weeks ago, or back in May rather, when I was in Ontario, and I noticed that when you put the vehicle into reverse and you're backing into a space, the mirrors adjust automatically. Now, I don't know if you have a newer car that you can do that, but on a road test, there are some driving instructors that will get you to adjust, to readjust the mirrors when you're parking. However, myself, and I believe Sam as well, do not recommend that you are adjusting mirrors while you're preparing to parallel park or to reverse stall park because examiners just kind of get you know they're kind of frustrated because uh, they're pressured because they have a certain number of tests that they have to get done in a day and if you're spending you know 30 40 seconds adjusting mirrors to, to park it kind of annoys them a little bit so uh, just yeah have a look at that yes Tim my uh, <laughs> my shifting video is still killing it it is uh, 280,000 minutes of watch time on Friday. So, yes, it is still killing it. <laughs> Vinayak, uh, why do driver test inspectors ins insist on driving in residentials? Is it wrong to drive at 40 in a 50 kilometer hour zone in Canada? Uh, Vinayak posted speed limits. So, there's three speeds that you need to drive for the purposes of a road test. Okay, you need to drive the posted speed limit, you need to drive the flow of traffic or you need to drive the speed that your vehicle will do so for example if you're in a bigger vehicle like a tractor trailer it's not going to go uphill at the posted speed limit so whichever one of those three is less that's how fast you travel for the purposes of a road test now saying that if you are in a residential area with a lot of cars parked along both sides of the roadway uh, then yes you can drive at a slower speed if the conditions the road conditions warrant it so you can do that uh, so just know that for the purposes of the road test that you can drive at a slower speed if you're in a high pedestrian traffic area you can also you can also drive at a slower speed there as well so know that okay so you don't have to drive at the posted speed limit all the time if the conditions warrant it then you can in fact drive slower so okay so Sam is from the Bronx yes Sweeney is from Harlem in New York that's awesome uh, yeah Sam asked a good question where, <laughs> where are people from so Sandra lives in New York so Sam can talk to that a little bit about that do motorcycles in New York City lane split is that an acceptable driving culture in New York City that motorcycles lane split split while they're down there uh, do, do, do. who else okay so I answered Sweeney's question Majin is from Houston big money boss bicycle lanes you're talking about bicycle lanes right big money boss because if you're talking about bicycle lanes, I just put up a video a couple of weeks ago about turning right at bicycle lanes. I'm wearing my very spiffy bicycle lane outfit, so I did that for you. Atlanta, Steve is from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, uh, Fremont, what do you do if the police pull you over? Well, you pull over in a safe place, first and foremost. 
you if you're on a busy highway you don't have to pull over to the edge of the road you can go down the road and pull off on an exit ramp or you can pull into a fueling station or some other place and the police appreciate that that they're not standing out on the side of the road trying to talk to you while they're you know giving you a ticket or a warning or whatnot and so the other thing with police uh be polite <laughs> this comes back to the road rage thing and the anxiousness thing and the fear and whatnot do not be belligerent because i will guarantee you if you are belligerent to a police officer uh you are almost always going to get a speeding ticket because they're just kind of like well if you're not going to be nice to me then i'm just going to give you a ticket so if you're nice to them a lot of times they'll just give you a warning so know that as well look at the video here on being pulled over and i'll tell you um there's an interesting story in there about me being pulled over in uh north carolina by a a police officer because <laughs> I was speeding when I was driving truck uh, Sweeney okay so did that answer the question um, during the driver's test Tony asked during the driver's test when the instructor asked you to turn a specific direction you usually have to change lanes in order to turn are you does your give you lots of time to change lanes yes uh, the driving instructors or the driving examiners rather are quite good at giving you plenty of notice they're going to give you at least a block now, some driving instructors, Mikel, uh, where is Mikel from? That just popped off there. Wake Forest, North Carolina. That's awesome. So I'll have to tell my police story about being in North Carolina. Uh, yes, going back to driving examiners on your road test, they're going to give you plenty of notice when you need to change lanes to prepare to turn uh, right or left at an intersection. And sometimes some driving ex examiners, not all driving examiners, but some will say, at the controlled intersection turn right and the reason that they say controlled intersection a controlled intersection is designed as is de designated as an intersection with a sign a stop sign a yield sign or traffic lights so that's a controlled intersection or they might say at the intersection at the next intersection turn right and when they say at the intersection they're just saying at the next intersection there's no control there because oftentimes it's a you're turning onto a minor road off a major road and there's no controls on the major road for you to observe. So they'll just say at the next intersection, turn right. So that's uh, directions that they'll give you for the purposes of taking, uh, giving you directions uh, during a road test, all right? And, and there are, I have seen on YouTube, a few actual road tests where people have snuck cameras in the car and are videoing the road test. I wouldn't suggest to do that because it's not, you know, you could have your road test uh, halted or stopped because you're recording it. So, Nargis, uh, if you're at a T junction and there is a car waiting to make a left onto the vertical road and you want to make a right and there is no sign besides a stop sign, do you have to wait or go? Uh, if you're making a left and they're making a right. You can go, Nargis, but what I recommend and what I say to all students in terms of a defensive move, ensure, make sure that that car is committed to that turn. If the car is not committed to the turn, do not pull out in front of them because they may change their mind and may just proceed straight through. And if they proceed straight through, unfortunately, you're in the wrong. So always make sure that before you pull out into the left lane or make a pulling out for your left turn, make sure that that other vehicle is committed to the right turn, okay? Ashimer, I passed my New Jersey's road test in May. Congratulations, that's awesome. And Indiana, Justice, uh, what is the best way to pass the knowledge test? Yes, Justice Bry, <laughs> my tagline, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer, is key to the multiple choice tests that you're going to be required to pass your theory test. Now, when you take your theory test, study, as <laughs> Sibelisk says here, study, yes, that's perfect. Now, the key fundamental tool of passing the theory test is find the practice test questions here on the internet, and some of them will be specific and some of them won't. There are some on my uh, Smart Drive test website, just go down the a column on the right there and pick the menu item and do the practice tests now go and do the practice test see how you do and don't read 
You think my microphone came unplugged? Plugged. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, no, I think it's still, still working. I think it's, well, it's showing it's working here. So anyway, okay. Um, theory test, yes. Do the practice driving test questions, see which ones you get wrong, and then go look up that specific information in the driving manual. Don't read the driving manual from cover to cover because it's boring. <laughs> Identify the gaps in your knowledge, go to the driving manual, and then look up the specific specific information that you don't know. And just keep doing the practice driving tests over and over again. Okay, uh, can everybody, everybody can still hear me? So my volume got turned down somehow. Okay, so you can hear me, excellent. So I did check that it was still plugged in. Uh, knowledge tests, we've done that. Fire wreck, can I pass a school bus if I'm not in the lane next to the school bus? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The only time that you cannot, that you can pass a school bus is if you're on a divided highway that has a physical barrier between the two lanes of traffic. Otherwise, you, if the school bus is stopped with the flashing lights and the, the stop sign out, you must stop until the vehicle or the school bus turns the lights off and the stop sign retracts. That's the only time that you can go. Now, New York State. <laughs> we come back to New York State being yet different again. Uh, even if it's a divided highway, you still have to stop for a school bus. However, a lot of people in New York State do not stop. And if you look at some of the information here on the internet, they say that there's a high number of drivers that do not stop for school buses in the state of New York. And I can understand that because uh, do I stop for the school bus or do I risk being rear-ended? And I think I would rather, you know, on a divided highway that's split with a physical barrier, I don't want to take the chance of being rear-ended. So I would just proceed. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much. Excellent. Well, that's good that you can still hear me. Uh, Brett, when I turn left, I will take my right hand and kind of just hold the wheel at 7 o'clock position with one hand until finish the turn. Is that okay? No, that's not okay, Brett both hands on the steering wheel for the purposes of a road test and most places in North North America are going to be hand over hand look at the videos here on steering wheel hand position and how to manipulate the steering wheel uh, some of them some driving instructors some driving examiners will want you to manipulate the steering wheel back others will allow you to just simply open your fingers keep the steering wheel in contact with your palms and let it come back through your palms slide through your palms because it will do that automatically and then just adjust slightly so know that's how you could do that you cannot one hand the steering wheel there's no one hand there's no palming the steering wheel for the purposes of a road test both hands on the steering wheel at all times and you'll know <laughs> that I struggle to keep both hands on the steering wheel when I'm teaching people how to drive so okay uh, DV lottery guide. So pretty much every left turn at an intersection is a yield turn right. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Do have a look at the two videos on left turns here and that'll give you some more information about that. And if you have more questions, leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to get back to you and answer that question for you. Uh, Majin, what if four people stop at a four-way stop sign intersection at the same time? Okay, so watch the video here on four-way stops. Most people will come. It's very unlikely that four cars are going to arrive at a four-way stop at the same time. But if the if the four-way stop gets busy, what happens is the alternating lanes or crossroads take turns going through the intersection. Uh, so know that, and just have a look at the video here on four-way stops, and then I'll give you some information. But basically, what it is is sort of you know if you had four cars that arrived at the four-way stop at the same time, it would sort of be. Whoever's bold enough to go first, and then the rest of them are going to kind of give them the right of way. Because remember, as I say all the time, again and again, right of way is never taken. The right of way is always given. Okay, you cannot have the right of way unless somebody else gives it to you. So just know that. Okay. Um, fire wreck. Which uh, uh, which place would be the best place to practice controlling my car? Uh, an empty parking lot, uh, fire wreck, or some other closed circuit area where there's very little traffic. If you Sometimes if you're in an urban area, uh, churches will not have very much traffic during the week. Uh, church parking lots, rather, and they're not too uh, upset about you doing that. Um, those are good places to practice. Other types of parking lots around theaters and those types of things because theaters don't have 
uh, much parking in uh, cars parked in there during the day and those types of things. So those are good places to practice. Uh, there's lots of mall parking lots that you can go and, and practice. Uh, if the other place that you can go and practice slow speed maneuvers is to go outside of the city and uh, some of the rural road or yeah rural roads and those types of things. I always have to think between rural and urban <laughs> about that definition. So you can go out to some of the rural roads and uh, that will help you out as well and so you can find a place out there that will have a controlled area. Tony, uh, does the driving test instructor pick which parking spot you back into? Um, they may not. They may just say park along over the building there or whatnot. Uh, Sam might be able to comment on that whether they give you specific space that you have to back into. One of the things that I recommend when you're backing into a space is try and park beside another vehicle because that's much easier than trying to park into a space that there aren't any vehicles around you. Because if there's another vehicle that you're parking off of, it gives you a reference point and it's much easier to back into a space if, uh, if there's another vehicle there because you can use that as a reference point. Okay. Big Bubba Trucker, yes, and leave yourself enough time to be a courteous driver. It's easier to yield the right of way at a four we stop if everyone arrived at the same time than it is to create an accident. Yes, and as well, just on that note of what Big Bubba said, it doesn't take any time out of your day to be nice to people, right? If you let people in and those types of things, really, and, you know, pay it forward. And, you know, because driving is a social experience, and unfortunately, too many of us, we kind of get into that negative uh, frame of mind where it's just like, ah, that person cut me off, and ah, and you, have you ever noticed that when you're driving that the person in front of you is, uh, you know, uh, driving like a bonehead, and the person behind you who's driving slower is driving like a goofball? So, you know, we're, <laughs> we're always thinking that we're perfect, but just, you know, as I say, try and relax, sit back, take a breath, be nice to people. So, uh, yeah, um, and it uh, doesn't take any time out of your day. Okay, Ashimer, uh, I will get that to you. Um, just send me an email, rick at Smart Drive Test, and I'll get you a copy of that, okay? And we can, we can go forward from there. DV Lottery, another question. Uh, I'm in Ohio, I passed maneuver, maneuverability, but I failed uh, the road, I scheduled another BMV location. Do you think I might have to retake the maneuverability? Uh, I'm not following that in terms of Ohio. Does, um, when you're saying maneuverability, is that, do they have two parts to the road test in Ohio? Because I'm not familiar with what uh, the road tests are in Ohio. So just explain to me a little bit what maneuverability is and I'll be able to comment on that for you. Um, otherwise I'd have to look it up for you on the DMV website. Okay, Mystery Queen, uh, what tips do you have for a person who hasn't driven in years and wants to start back? Where I would start, Mystery Queen, is I would strongly suggest that you go to a parking lot, uh, get some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons, and just go to the parking lot and just get comfortable with the primary controls again. So just drive straight down the parking lot, back up uh, down the parking lot, and just you know get used to the steering wheel, get used to the throttle and the brake and those types of things. Uh, so that's where I would start with that and then I would uh, and then before you venture out onto the roadway I would find a, a mentor or somebody that can help you with that or um, a driving instructor if you're going to take some driving lessons but I would really start in a, in a parking lot or a closed circuit area or a really you know low density traffic place that would al allow you to get comfortable with the vehicle first because you really want to get comfortable with the vehicle first before you get started Cyan Sleep, thank you so much for that. Um, you know, I'm gl really glad that the information is helping people to get their license and pass the road test and reduce stress and anxiety because that's really the goal of the channel is to really help people do that. Uh, <laughs> Peely Tress, I saw a video of a chopper with a spotlight chasing a motorcycle. What do you do if this happens? Um, so are you one of the other cars on the roadway where there's a high high speed chase with a with a helicopter? <laughs> because if that's the situation that you have you saw, uh, my suggestion would be just to move off to the side of the road and let the motorcycle and the helicopter go by because it's essentially an emergency vehicle situation is what you're doing. Okay. Okay, so lottery guide, yeah, pretty much parking, and the other is just to drive around the block. So just, um, okay. 
If you booked it at another location, you're probably going to have to do that again, is my suspicion. But um, you might just want to, what I would suggest is you just contact the DMV center where you're taking your road test and just ask them that question and they'll be able to give you specific information because I won't be able to give you um, specific information for that, uh, that road test. So just do that and they'll be able to give you more specific information about that. All right. Yeah, and Isoblisk, this is the other thing, is, is that schools uh, don't go back into session for another two or three weeks. So uh, school parking lots are another place that you can go uh, for closed circuit areas or doing slow speed maneuvers. That's another place that you can go to do that. Um, okay. Yes, and for driving schools, there's some talk, some discussion here on this about uh, road tests. Uh, if you're taking driving lessons with a driving school, it's going to be the driving school that will book your road test because they have blocks of time that they book with the DMV centers, the licensing centers, and your driving school will book the road test for you. Now, uh, if you book your own and you have a driving instructor, you need to tell your driving instructor that you've booked a road test and when that road test date is, so just know that as well. <laughs> uh, that's funny so well we're glad you're back Sam uh, that's that's great okay uh, Ashimer what is a professional driver's license a provisional driver's license allows you to drive uh, it just it's a temporary license it's not gonna last very long so just take note of what the date is on your provisional driver's license and there's gonna be some conditions as well on your driver's license depending on whether that's prescription glasses or other types of things or whatnot. So have a look at the FIED print. Oftentimes it'll be on the back. If you turn it over, it'll be on the back of the license. So have a look at that. Uh, so Sam, we had a question earlier about lane splitting with motorcycles. Do they do that in New York City? Do they lane split uh, with motorcycles in New York City? Is that something else that uh, is something that uh, new drivers are going to have to deal with on a road test and when they're driving in New York City in the outer suburbs, Queens and Brooklyn and whatnot there. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's a requirement high tech. I think it is a requirement when you're doing a cattle hauler that you are driving really fast though. So, um, Jennifer, when you have a road test that has a fork and you have a stop sign in the left and a yield in the left, what do I do? Do I stop and then yield or is the stop sign for the other road in the fork? Uh, Jennifer, you'd have to send me the specific intersection and I'd have a look at it on Google for you. I'd be able to give you more specific, spe more specific information. So send me that and I'll have a look at it and then I can give you more specific, specific information about that. But right now, I, just, I can't comment on it. Tony, yes. Uh, <laughs> they're not supposed to lane split in New York, but they do it all the time. Yes, I know that they're not supposed to lane split, but they do do it. And it's part of the driving culture. There's a lot of things in terms of our driving culture that are different than what the laws actually allow. And motorcycles are one uh, of those things. So yes, Tony, uh, your question about hill parking. Yes, it is the three in one rule. The only time that you turn the wheels out towards the center of the road is uphill with a curb. And then you let the vehicle roll back until the back of the front steer tire touches the curb. So it's a three, one, three in one rule. That's the only time that they're out towards the center of the road. The rest of the time they're in towards the shoulder of the road. So it's so just have a look at the hill parking video there. And that will give you more information about how to hill park successfully for the purposes of a road test. Isoblisk, yes, you would be able to handle driving in New York. There, you know, it's fairly easy. I drove a truck around there for six months, you know, with a 53 foot trailer on it up and down Broadway and down into lower Manhattan and Bronx and the Queens. And I'll tell you a funny story about driving in New York City. Uh, I was going on, I was going to Long Island because I was going to Long Island City. <clears throat> Excuse me in the big truck. So I, I come in through Jersey and I come across uh, through Brooklyn and I went up the BQE and I headed out 
east on the Be on the Long Island Expressway. Well, I thinking that Long Island City is on Long Island, <laughs> and I got out about mile 30, mile 40, mile more 45, and I got on the CB radio and said, "Does anybody know where Long Island City is?" And uh, somebody, one of the other truckers, come back and he said to me, "He said, you know that three or four miles west of the Brooklyn Queens Expressway in Queens." He said, that's where Long Island City is. So I had to turn around and drive back 45 miles back to Queens because Long Island City is in Queens. Just if you're ever going to New York City, know that Long Island City is not on Long Island. <laughs> Big Bubba, never again. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's some interesting experiences. And I mean, the Long Island Expressway is uh, affectionately nicknamed the Long Island Expressway. So... Sweeney 15, they say if you drive in New York, you can drive anywhere. We do have a lot of people who don't signal or signal late. Yes, well, signals are optional in most vehicles, especially after you get your driver's license. Now, driving in New York, actually, I found driving in New York City actually a lot easier than driving in Boston, in driving in Atlanta, Georgia, or driving in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Those places I found much more daunting than driving in New York City, especially Boston especially if you get into the old city inside of the ring road in a big truck because you get in there and you have a delivery at an office building because when I drove truck, I delivered uh, office furniture. And you would drive down a street in the inner city uh, and all of a sudden the road would end. Just end. You're in a big truck, 53 feet, 75 feet long, and the, and the road ends. <laughs> and you got to back up. So... Uh, <laughs> Sam says you get used to driving in New York City. And Sam would know. He's a driving instructor. He teaches new people how to drive in New York City all the time. So he has uh, <clears throat> he has the break on that. Yes, Big Bubba, they do have <laughs> signals in new cars. Okay, Erica, how do you know how wide to turn, especially on a tight street when cars are parked? Erica, are you in a commercial vehicle or are you in a car? Let me know that because if, if it's in a commercial vehicle like a boss a coach or a tractor trailer then it's different than if you're in a car so just uh, let me know that information and Tony if uh, cars and trucks are parked on the side of the road and obstruct you your way are you permitted to go over the solid white line yes now no if you de that's a good question Tony if you deviate out of your lane for the purposes of getting around other traffic you need to signal, you need to mirror signal shoulder check into that other lane. You need to observe, you need to signal, you need to communicate that you're going to move out of your lane and deviate into the other lane. Even if it's a little bit, you still need to indicate to other traffic. So, <laughs> Sam, I get students that are a nervous wreck, no doubt. Uh, yes. Um, when I first drove into New York City, I had to get on to Broadway to go down into Manhattan and I asked one of the other drivers and he said you just get off the exit on off the George Washington Bridge and it was four times that I went to New York City before I actually found the exit off the bridge the George Washington Bridge because the exit in normal thinking is not off the bridge the exit is actually on the bridge and I drove right by that two or three times and had to come back around before I finally figured out where that exit was off the George Washington Bridge to get on to Broadway if he had have said the exit is on the bridge, <laughs> my life would have been easier because you're driving a 75 foot truck and it just doesn't turn around in a parking lot somewhere. You actually got to go up to an exit and come back around. So uh, yes, I can understand them being a little bit nervous because the first few times I was in New York City, it was a bit nerve wracking. But uh, mind you, I wasn't in a car either. So, okay, uh, Sweeney 15, uh, Sam teaches at the Rookie Auto Driving School in Bronx. Okay, um, <coughs> the, oh yes, so Erica, I'm in a car. So oftentimes when you're turning, say you're turning right, Erica, at, uh, on a street that has a lot of cars parked on the other side, generally before you turn the steering wheel, you have to be in line with the front of the vehicles that you're going to be turning around. So that's a good indication. The other thing I would strongly suggest, Erica, if you're not comfortable with the primary controls and sort of where the vehicle is in space and place, uh, look at the fundamentals of driving video here on the channel and uh, again after I finish the video here I'll put it down in the description for you and uh, go to a parking lot and get some of those 36 inch uh, tall pylons the meter tall pylons 
and work with those and, and just get more comfortable with parallel parking and backing around corners and those types of things as well. If you practice backing up, that's going to improve your overall driving. So know that as well. Okay. And let's see who else we got. <coughs> Excuse me. I just got to drink a water here out of my Spider-Man cup. There we go. Oh, excellent. Hamid, uh, Hamid Noor, you passed your CDL license. That's excellent. That is awesome news. Uh, just leave a comment for me and I'll put that on the website because I'm want. i starting to, anybody who's passed the road test, I'm putting it on the website as well. So we have a good, you know, successful, smart drivers uh, on the website, which is really great. Uh, Ashimer, if you get your license suspended, do you have to take a road test? I think in some situations you do actually have to take a road test to get your license back after it's been suspended. Uh, it depends on the conditions and what happened, whether you uh, have to take a road test or whatnot. So there you go. Um, Tony, when you turn left and have a green light on the turn to wait for um, anyone going through the green before turning, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And again, Tony, I would really encourage you to look at the videos on uh, turning left at a complex intersection. Those will help you out. <laughs> Fire wreck. Why don't bicycles ride on the sidewalk? Bicycles, believe it or not, are considered part of the road, the road landscape. They're considered a road user, so that's why they're um, uh, they're considered, you know, so they because they travel fast and pedestrians are supposed to be on the sidewalk. So bicycles are actually supposed to be on the roadway and some of them travel pretty quickly I know when I ride my bicycle that they uh, are pretty quick so there's the website so you can go over there and have a look at the website so um, and if you have any questions about the website or you have any anything that you want because I'm still working on it and those types of things now the other thing uh, did I put this up for you Yes, I did put this up for you. Let's see if I can get this for you. Um, yes, here we go. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna show you this course that I'm working on right now, and then we'll go. We'll go from there. So, here's the course. This is the course I'm working on right now. This uh, is called Pass Your Road Test First Time Guaranteed. This is for new drivers. I'll just turn this off as well. Here we go. <clears throat> Okay, so pass your road test first time. These are the lessons I've been working on this and I'm my goal is to have this done by the end of the week for you. So the first, this is the, there's gonna be a glossary of terms like uh, painted islands, controlled intersections, uncontrolled intersections, secondary and primary controls and those types of things. So anything that you're not sure of or don't know the, the term for, uh, I'm gonna put it into the glossary for you. Uh, lesson one goes over the vehicle and its primary and secondary controls. There's some test questions, just two or three test questions for each one of these lessons. Maneuvers required for a road test, so the types of maneuvers that you need to do. Parallel parking, three-point turn, uh, reverse stall park, those types of slow speed maneuvers. So all of the videos are there for that. Road test rules of the road, so turning at controlled and un uncontrolled intersections, turning at T intersections, and those types of things are the lessons that are the information that's included in that lesson. And then turning and merging, how to turn right and left at complex intersections and in residential areas, and then how to merge correctly, how to change lanes, all of that information is there. There's a mock road test, and then there's road test do's and don'ts. And the road test do's and don'ts are stopping behind other traffic so you can see the tires making clear contact with the vehicle or the tires making clear contact with the pavement rather uh, not driving over painted islands uh, when to merge correctly and how to merge correctly and those types of things and don't block intersections those types of things so those are the types of information that are there there's also a driving toolkit here there's lots of good information in terms of a guide for mentors who are helping new drivers how to learn and that is available free on my website but if you buy the course and the course is going to sell for thirty six dollars and ninety nine cents so that's going to be how much the course is going to be 
pass a road test license checklist. So this is uh, for road test day when you go down for your license. It gives you a checklist of things that you need to look at and consider. Uh, have, do you have all your identification? Uh, do you have your prescription glasses? Have you done a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle if you're taking your own vehicle and not a driving school? Make sure you ask the instructor if they, he or she did a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you go down for your road test. Uh, winter driving checklist, trailering, contract for life. And if you haven't signed one of these contracts for life, this is put out by MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And it's a protection, it's just an agreement between you and your parents or friends or family, or whoever, that if you've been out drinking, uh, that you can call them at any time and they'll come and pick you up and then it works. It's a, it's a relationship between both of you so that it can work for them as well. There's bonus material, how to drive a manual car, driving in the winter and how to pull a trailer. So all of this is good bonus information. And then there's a final exam for the course here as well. And there'd be a quiz and all the questions. There's uh, a bank of approximately 200 questions that you can draw from. All of the questions have feedback, whether you got it right or wrong, so you don't have to go back to the manual, look it up. And this is an international course. This will work for just about anywhere in the country. Now, there's going to be obviously some specific information that you'll need for your area. And again, I encourage you to uh, Make sure that you do a mock road test seven to 10 days before your road test. And uh, that way you're gonna get the specific information and you will get feedback from the driving instructor that will be able to give you uh, specific feedback about the road test in the area where you're going to be taking that. So that's, that's a course that I'm working on now. And as I said, I'm hoping, uh, no, I'm not hoping, I will have it up by the end of the week. So. Uh, that's the course that I'm working on uh, that will be available to smart drivers and it's guaranteed pass a road test first time because there's a lot of fear and trepidation around being tested and those types of things and we don't like being tested we don't like somebody looking at us and, and criticizing our driving so that's available as well uh, and that'll be available and as I said it's going to be $35.99 for that course and it's pass a road test first time guaranteed or your money back after 30 days if you're not successful. Uh, Steve, yes. <laughs> Even though you know how to drive and you know all the road rules, yes, learning how to drive a car is, mm, in some respects it is, but you have to remember that you're also brand new to driving, so it can be a little bit uh, daunting for new drivers who are learning how to drive. So yeah, I don't, I'm, I need to think about that now because now that's a good, that's a good question. Is it easier to learn to drive a car or learn to drive a rig? Because when you learn to drive a rig, you already know how to drive. So uh, I'll give that some thought. King, uh, good, good luck on your road test the day after tomorrow. It's going to be great. Uh, yeah, we're running up to the 60 minutes here, so I'm going to wrap this up here pretty quickly because I'm starting to my brain is starting to <laughs> slow down on me. Uh, Fire wreck. you call someone if you're drunk driving or about to be drunk driving. Now, fire wreck. that's a good point. That's an excellent point. If you're drinking, make the decision about how you're going to get home before you start drinking, not when you are drinking. Because when we start drinking or imbibing, we make bad decisions because we're already intoxicated. So make the plans to get home or however you're going to get home before you start drinking. That way it's more likely that you're gonna get somebody to come and get you, or you're gonna walk home, or you're gonna take a taxi or whatnot, because you've already put those plans in place. So if you're planning on going out and partying and drinking and those types of things, make the, the plans or the get somebody to help get, give you a ride home before you actually start drinking. That's good advice. I <laughs> said, I learned how to drive my grandfather's Tahoe. Well, that's almost as big as a rig, so. King, you are very welcome, and good luck on your road test. And as I said, if anybody has any questions, uh, Big Bubba. <laughs> Thank you very much, Big Bubba. That's uh, an awesome compliment. Uh, I try really hard to, to get people the best information and try and break it down as much as possible. And that's the reason I wrote the air brake manual that I'm going to get to you here uh, right shortly as well. That's another thing on my list of priorities that I need to get done uh, because it just... You know, I try and make things as simple as possible for people, and I don't know why there's a yellow tinge in my thing. Maybe it's telling me we're at the 60 minute mark and I need to wrap this up. So if you have any questions, by all means, leave me a comment in the comment sections. I try and get to those uh, every night 
within 24 hours, 48 hours at the most with my comments. So I'll get back to you as, as quickly as I can. If not, send me an email at rick at smartdrivetest.com. Uh, on August 30th, second time. Good luck on your road test. Um, Ashimer, if you get a CDL, no, you don't have to use it for a, 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 road, a job. <laughs> and Fire Rec, you are most welcome. <laughs> yes, Sam. Sometimes you have to intervene with students. Uh, I, yeah, you got to sort of move their leg, or you simply just push the gear selector into neutral and grab a hold of the steering wheel and uh, you know intervene. But uh, I oftentimes I try and get them comfortable before I take them out on the roadway, and hopefully I can talk them through it. But I have had, as you said, yes, we have had to intervene on different occasions. So yes. Everybody have a great night. Thanks very much for showing up. Thanks so much for your time. Again, if you have any questions at all, drop me a note. I'm more than happy to give you a hand. All the best for those of you who are taking your road test. Congratulations to all of you who have passed your road test in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, all the best. Good luck in your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.